Good morning. Welcome back to Ribbon Candy Hooking. I'm Deanna. I've got a real project going today. Um, the kind of project that you put off for as long as possible. And um, this is for my sister's birthday. I'm doing a footstool. So this is going to be a footstool tutorial. How to do a footstool, how to finish a stool in the easiest, quickest, most painless way, still making it beautiful, lovely, utilitarian, and perfect. So her birthday was um, three weeks ago, but because we haven't been getting together with crazy times, um, I, I had a little more time, thank goodness, because I was not ready. This is the design I've done. So this is what your footstool pattern will look like. And by that, I mean, I have a pattern that is notched, you know, at um, right angles around the corners, because of course, those are the parts that are going to wrap under. So I drew this, I just drew this myself based on the stool that I have that I'm going to show you. It's an old stool that I found at a thrift store. So let me show you this design first, because this is this is one of my favorite things I've ever done. I haven't blocked it yet. That's going to be part of the video in just a couple of minutes. But this is a design. This is this is why I love rug hooking. So many reasons, but being able to do something sentimental and nostalgic. This design I took off of a menu from the days when my parents used to travel on the SS France. This is years ago when my dad was alive and they were young and honeymooning and doing couple stuff. Um, without my my sister and I, my younger sister and I, and um, this is going to be for my younger sister, Jessica, and my parents every night went to dinner, um, sometimes at the cap captain's table, I guess if you were invited, that was like a special sort of uh, distinction, a little prestige you got being able to sit there, but regardless, wherever they sat you, they would give you a beautiful menu every night, and you could keep the menu as a souvenir with your choices for just that one evening. So they have a collection of maybe 12 or 15 menus that my mom framed, and she's never had them down. She's always had them up on the walls. And so my sister and I grew up with these beautiful menus. And this one was called Le Ferret, which is like the ferret. And it's a white ferret, as you can see. It's an albino with a little red eye, which to me was always, as a child, just a weird inclusion it was a weird touch that it would be a, a albino ferret but it is and the pattern i'll show you later i, I printed it out was actually a square um, it's just the, the ferret is at the very border of it so i had to beef out the design by adding some flowers on one side some more bushes on the other side to make it look right but my sister doesn't know she's getting this and this is the exact color scheme uh, maybe, except maybe the bright pinks of the menu itself and i'll show you that but um, she doesn't know she's getting this, and, and I think it's going to be a great gift for her because I've given her stuff before. I've given her a lot of, like, hooked rug stuff and quilt stuff and stuff I've made, and, and I don't want her... She's got a beautiful big house in New Haven, but I don't want her house to be filled with my junk. So I thought, let me give her something a little bit different this time, and let's try a footstool. So I drew this pattern based on this footstool. I have a bunch of footstools because I hoard everything and if uh, the tv people came to the house they would not be disappointed because there is junk everywhere so this is the footstool i found um and i liked i liked the scale of it it is let's see it's small it's not a massive one uh, it's about 15 by 12. and i liked the delicacy of the feet um you know they're they're little rounded feet these you know it's not like spectacular victorian craziness but it's simple and I think it's I think it's pretty and I think it's good for the bottom of that. I think it's the right size. So I measured this really perfunctory measure, just 12 by 15, close enough. And then I drew that on the canvas and then I transferred my design. So that's all been done before and I have videos on transferring designs onto backing. But the main thing is this size is gonna fit this size. And that's the only thing I need to know at this point. Now. When I was finishing this, you can maybe see, I drew, um, I drew the line a bit longer on each side because I thought it might be a lot deeper. Now this isn't that deep and I like, I like the scale of this. That's not super deep. So it's certainly not as deep as this. So I ended up hooking to here on every side, the same amount. And I just held with that because I felt like when I fold this back and I look at what it's going to look like in terms of the side, for me, that's that's right. 
you know, it's going to get pulled tight and finishing. That looks right to me. So I was happy to leave it at that. I have a ton of foam in the basement from pillows and have finished things. I don't have any foam that's big enough, but I have this foam, which is three inches. And when I put this foam up the edge of this as a preview for myself, I think it's going to be the right size, right? Because when I wrap around there, it's going to be pulled tight under the stool. You're not going to see that white, but this to me is the right size for the footstool, for this footstool. There's all kinds of footstools that are like giant blocks or cubes, you know, that the whole thing is hooked. Um, this is just a footstool cover for me. So this is going to be, I think, I think perfect. We're going to be putting it together together. So you will find out quickly if I'm wrong. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do with this is um, stitch around the edges. I'll do that in just a minute and then I'm going to block it and I'll do that with you too. But let's just quickly look at this footstool. So I am not uh, a carpenter by any means, but I do mess around with furniture a lot. Um, and one of the first things I noticed about this footstool, as with most older footstools that are not, you know, Chippendale, um, the legs come off, right? There's, this is simple construction. This is probably a homemade stool. And I just checked right before this video to make sure that the legs come off and indeed they do. So that is nice. I'm gonna take all four of them off because as you can imagine, if you have a stool where the feet don't come off, you are going to have a corners problem, right? When you bring this to corners and you need to tuck it around, get it around, wrap it around, there's gonna be an issue, right? You're not gonna be able to get a folded corner that you can staple down because there's going to be a leg in the way. So if you're at a thrift store and you're looking to do something like this cheaply and beautifully and use a salvage piece rather than starting from scratch, just, just give the legs a little turn to be sure that they come off. Could be that they're glued on and you can hack them off, you know, with a hammer, also possible. Now, I have not, I have not been here before. This is as far as I've gotten, the four legs, which is the reason I liked it in the first place. A lot of people want to paint legs on footstools and stuff like that. Uh, if you can see, this construction is done. It's very shoddy. We're going to do a little bit better than this. We're going to fold under, but I can tell there's multi-layers of fabric in here, and there's very old nails, not colonial old, but um, I would say 1920s old, or maybe a little bit older, um, that are going to come up easy. So these are little upholstery tacks. I'm pulling out, and I have glasses on, so I do not lose an eye with this kind of fun. Uh, this was not put together in a really amazing way um, only because of the, of the way the backing looks at least the last time we might have a surprise underneath it might be that the original piece is glorious can you imagine if the original piece is like a um, beautiful tapestry or something but what we've got on top is rusty nails and not the not the cocktail we just got literally rusty nails so I'm being careful and they're coming out easy because upholstery they're actually upholstery tacks not nails upholstery tacks are always small. You can finish your project with upholstery tacks if you want to rather than a uh, staple gun, which I think I'm going to do. Well, upholstery tacks look like this. They can be uh, not fancy like this, very primitive and plain, or you can get the fancy ones, but you know, when you're securing it underneath, there's no reason to get the fancy ones. They cost more. And with upholstery tacks, you literally just pull and hammer them in. Uh, it's not rocket surgery, right? You're just you need the hammer, you need the things. Craft stores sell these, but if you're not near a craft store, they sell them online too. So I think I'm going to go off camera for a minute and put the fan on and fool with some of these stubborn nails. And I'll come back when we're ready to pull the top off this guy. Okay, so that took all of five seconds. And now these are all my little guys in the middle. I'm going to get rid of these little nails. And I'm pulling off the first layer. The reason I'm showing you this is because if you are doing a footstool with a salvage piece like this, this will be part of your world. You'll be doing this part too. So far, my only tool has been a screwdriver. Now, I'm really hoping when I peel this back that there's not like a nest of centipedes or something. You know how um, creatures, animals always have a different word for a multiple, a plural group, like, like a murder of crows. And certainly if there were centipedes in here, they would, it would be a murder of centipedes because I would, I would die. The sight would kill me. So, so far so good on that front. Um, my handy scissors are not here, of course. I'm just going to cut this back because somebody has cut it. It's not as old as I thought. That's not a real old piece. No, 
that's an early 20th century piece for sure. So covered by another early 20th century piece. The reason I'm pulling it now is because the person who did the second layer um, sewed it on in places. She must, she or he must have been having struggles. So this is all stuff that comes out easy. There's a staple in here. Yeah, this is all gonna come off easy. So we're down to a different, yeah, this is not a museum piece. Um, I shouldn't send this to the Victoria and Albert and anything like that anytime soon, but I can see why they put the cover on in the first place. That's kind of neat. So I'll get this away and I'm gonna go off camera again and go to our next, oh, you know what, there's another, it's a Russian nesting doll. There's another one underneath. I'm gonna go off camera again and fool with this next layer of guys. Okay, so next layer um, I think is ready to come off. So far the murder of uh, centipedes has not appeared. So again, this is another one where I'm seeing there's some little staples, some random stuff. You're gonna find this if you do it this way. This is not a big project. It truly is not. There's some nails sticking out though, so be careful. Okay, so this is certainly a 1930s stool. I can tell by the covering that that's a 1930s stool. And you know, I could have, um, I could have. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be impossible to cover the covers, right? Like this is three layers of covers on here. I could have done that myself, but number one, for me, it's a gift, and I want, to, I want to be sure it's real clean and um, as pristine as I can make it. So I wanted to get down to bare bones. But if it had been a newer stool or a stool that was less filthy, I might have been tempted to just cover it. You know, just if I had done that, I would need to account for the thickness of this plus the existing thickness on there, right? This only a little bit of padding, but um, here's only a little bit of padding. But you'd have to add that to this. It'd be another, you know, half inch. And with all these covers on it, even more. So let's see. Let's see what we've got. Still getting down to bare bones here. Oop, there's a nail, ready to give me tetanus problems, lock jaw, whatever. So, all right, let's see what we've got. Looks like we've got, this is the front of it. Yeah, that's definitely 19, late 20s, 1930s, real nice, but shot. So I am gonna go off camera one more time, and I can see there's even more little nails in here. This is not a hard job, and I've, I've been off camera for a total of maybe three to five minutes, but I want all of this off, and I wanna see what we've got at the beginning. So. Again, still working with this tool, nothing else, and I will be right back. So I have now introduced a second tool to this process, and that tool is a hammer. Um, some of these are stubborn, and I'm just giving it a little tap, tap, tap. Try to angle it, leverage it. Now, I don't wanna to talk to you the way that I talk to my six-year-old and my eight-year-old, but be careful. I've been doing some tap, tap, taps and fooling with the screwdriver, and I've almost taken a divot out of my hand multiple times, um, so just be careful. Just keep reminding yourself it's not worth, uh, you know, getting a rusty nail um, into my body or, or skinning my hand open with the screwdriver. But it does, it helps to give it a little tap, tap, tap. So, so far, screwdriver and nails. And we are, I almost cried a second ago, we, we are actually looking at a fourth layer um, unexpected, but that's okay. It looks like somebody, you know, redid this four times in one decade. I'm having flashbacks to bad wallpaper do-overs where you steam, 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 and there you think you're done, and then there's another layer, and you literally fall on the ground crying. I'm not quite there yet. This is still a fast project, and this is still going to be fun, but we are onto layer four. Okay, so I have finally got the fourth layer off, and I am ready to take um, the wood away and show you what we've got left with and I am completely joking right now I put a bunch of band-aids on my hand as a joke um, I'm making the point <laughs> I'm being stupid and I'm making the point that it is easy to get hurt with that part of pulling up the nails I was totally joking I did not have any injuries I got a tiny splinter and I pulled it out immediately as you do um, but I got no metal injuries and I will be certainly getting rid of all of these dozens of rusty nails because having these things around is about as good as having a bag of broken glass for the kids to find, you know. So I got the fourth layer off and it's basically looking like this. It's got a bit of sort of straw um, uh, padding in it and the fourth layer, and the fourth layer is actually really pretty if you can see that. 
nice faded design, real pretty 20s, 30s design. This was recovered a lot. So it's a very basic piece. It could be a homemade piece, could be a commercial piece. It's hard to tell. Uh, looks like somebody hacked away at it with the wrong saw back in the day and um, loved it enough or found it useful enough to put four layers on it. But I have now got the four layers off. And what I've got for a dollar or two dollars that I paid for, it wasn't more than that, is a footstool with four legs that are already ready to go. So I'm going to clean up my mess. I, I put down newspaper. I should have done that first because uh, it made a mess. So I'm going to just clean my surface up and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do next to prep the hooked part to go onto this guy. Okay, so now I have cleaned up my act and now I have got uh, le ferret back here on the table, my little ferret. And I'm going to do a zigzag stitch. I'm just putting my machine on zigzag. Simple as that. Just plain old zigzag because I do not have a serger um, to really finish the seams. But I know the step after this is I'm going to be trimming this. I'm going to be trimming the extra selvage, the extra border. And to do that, I want to be sure that I have some, uh, some kind of insurance that it's not going to wildly unravel. This is on monk's cloth. Um, whether you've got it on rug warp or monk's cloth or linen or burlap or anything, um, you should, if you have a sewing machine, you should just zigzag around the edges. I'm doing about uh, an inch. I'm doing about an inch from the border. It's a little fiddly turning it in here and everything, but you know, it's, it's worth it. It's peace of mind I'm buying here. Um, I'm going to be cutting outside of that line. So in the time that I'm handling this to sew the edges and get it over the top of the thing to staple it down, um, it, I'm going to handle it a little bit. And because of that, I want to be sure that it's not going to unravel. Hence this stage. And I haven't blocked it yet either. I think I'm going to block it right after this. I'm going to show you that too. So I'm just going to continue going around the edge on my sewing machine um, and finishing stitching a little ways away from the border so I know that I'm not going to have an unraveling issue. Okay, so I am at the next stage here. I just finished doing my zigzag stitch around the edges. Do, 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 zigity zaggity right around the edges. Is it perfect? No. Uh, is it is it kind of perfect? No. I just did it because I'm sealing the edge and you're not going to see it. And I did it quick and it's done. And now I have protected the edges from unraveling. So the next thing I'm going to do is block it. And we've done this before. I did a video just on blocking. I have a, a wet cloth, a damp cloth, and I've got my iron on um, steam, real high, as high as it goes. And I'm just going to put on a book cassette and do this because this is probably going to take I would say 20 minutes, half hour, something like that. It's not a huge piece, but it's going to take some time. So I know I'm going to be sitting here for a while. Um, I'm going to forward, but I'm basically just blocking. This is blocking. I've got a damp cloth. I've got my steamy iron. It's only 140 out today, I think. So woohoo! But I'm going to be doing this for a while, moving it around. And what I'm trying to do is get the loops, get it to stretch in the ways it needs to stretch to truly be perfect, and it will and to get the loops nice and uniform and flat to get the pile of them beautiful flat more finished looking it does make a huge big difference so this is the process until i am done this is blocking finishing blocking and i'm going to be doing this for a while and then i'll come back to you okay so we are at a good point now with our finishing this blocking part is almost done i've had this uh, iron on it for about half an hour and you know I could go for another hour but over time this is going to sort of uh, wear itself down a little bit finish itself soften on its own so this blocking is for me limited this is what I'm doing for now so I'm finishing up with this and the next thing I'm going to do is cut the border it's if you have these quilting type rulers it's handy you know you can see what you've got I want to leave about a one and a half um, inch border around and it's tricky to do this here let's see so I actually have to reverse this because this is my one inch so if I reverse it I can see one inch is going to be something like here all the way around this is also gridded monk's cloth so I'm going to be cutting that with the scissors 
in just a minute. I thought it's a good idea to say something about copyright at this point because the ferret is someone else's design. Now normally I do my own designs, but because this is a nostalgic thing and it's a family thing, this is from this menu. So I know who the artist is because I have the menu, but I am making this as a gift for my sister and I'm not selling this pattern at this moment um, commercially and I'm not making them for other people. I'm making this as a gift at home. So I'm not over worrying copyright. This is probably almost a hundred years old, this, the watercolor that this came from for the menu. But I've researched it a little bit and I will research it a little bit more. If you are using a copyrighted issue for your um, copyrighted image for yourself, you're fine. If you're using it um, to, to make commercially and sell, that's not fine. Whether it's another rug hooker or an artist, Teddy, I'm doing a video. I'm happy to have you in the video. You got a photo bomb? Little thing. Little thing's never got a shirt on. It's so hot though. Um, so you cannot use an image that it's not a good enough excuse that you don't know who did it or you can't find who did it or you don't know the age or where to begin. You have to be really careful when you use things that are copyrighted. So the reason I mention that is because a few people wrote about this as soon as I picture, uh, did a preview picture of it on our Facebook group, Rug Hooking and Punch Needle Club, uh, and said they wanted a pattern of it. So until I'm able to, uh, if I am able to get absolute clarity on the copyright to this, I will make a um, kit for it or at least the pattern for it, but it's, it's important for me being in business to make sure that I'm doing something that is legal and copyrighted and I'm not stealing someone else's work because if this, is, if this person is still alive and would like to be paid for this, I would like to pay them for this. This is a gorgeous image uh, and it's worth something. So the reason I bring that up is because I had a bit of a wind up on one of the Facebook, not Facebook, it was like an internet forum this week with somebody asking for a specific type of flower and I had that flower as a pattern and I uh, posted a picture of it um, and somebody wrote back, some other random person wrote back like, oh, I don't think you're allowed to use coloring book images as your own, um, which for me was a pretty pretty severe wind up, particularly that, that morning because um, I've never used a coloring book image as an image. I went to art school four times and I'll probably be paying for that for the rest of my life but uh, without sounding like a snob or whatever, the point is I'm super careful about copyright because I'm, I'm in business doing this. And you should be too, just in case. In a side, one of our neighbors growing up in Barrington, Rhode Island, was making collages with magazines. This was in the 70s. And she used some Time Magazine pictures and she thought, no big deal, right? Who, who's ever gonna know? And like the library or somebody hung some of her collages and somebody from Time Magazine happened to see this little tiny exhibit and she got in big trouble. So it can happen. Always be careful with copyright. Ferret is to be continued on that front. But again, this is a gift. This is not a commercial pattern. And I am now going to start with the scary business of iron, this furnace with the scary business of trimming. And I'm not gonna trim right to this um, zigzag line. I'm gonna trim, I'm gonna give myself more room than that. And I'm gonna use this as a little bit of a gauge. That's one inch and that's one and a half. I'm gonna do something like that. I think I'm just gonna grab my marker and just give myself a little bit of a gauge. I, again, you've seen this in other videos. I always like to use the red Sharpie, the industrial Sharpie versus the black Sharpie. The, this one is definitely everything proof smudge proof, waterproof, stain proof, whatever proof, um, messing up your finished product proof. So Donna at Whispering Hill Rug Hooking Shop in Woodstock, Connecticut told me that about the Sharpie markers, you know, to use these instead. And since then, anything she tells me, I go with it because she's a, she's a smart lady with a lot of experience. I'm going to one and three quarter inches to the edges. Um, so I'm going to be doing this all the way around just as a gauge, you know, just as a gauge. I don't do anything exactly exact, but I just want to have a feel that it's even all the way around. So I'm going to be doing this all the way around, and then I'm going to be coming back to you. And now it is a scary time to do our cutting out. So I just drew my line around there. You know, I always do this kind of thing, make stupid mistakes and just put an X through it. Um, don't, don't let yourself get defeated by, by stupid mistakes. Everybody makes them. They're the kind of thing that will never end. It will be part of eternity, stupid mistakes. Little ones like that aren't gonna matter at all. So I'm just trimming this up here, getting rid of my extra edges. It's not gonna take long. I'm getting a lot of pressure from Teddy in the doorway behind me. 
um, because I promised to sew some characters today from one of his video games that don't come made, of course, because they're not popular enough or known enough, so I'm going to have to take a break in a minute, combine running to Joanne's for some foam with running to Joanne's for some material to make zombie pigs. Um, it's just the way life is right now. It's going to be fun, too. Coming right around the edge here, trimming off the extra. You can see, particularly monk's cloth wants to, and linen, wants to unravel. But, you know, it can only go so far, and I'm working with it quickly. I could have made my zigzag further out. I could have. Um, I'm going to be doing this pretty quick, though. I'm not worried about it. I just didn't want it to reach the piece. But I could have zigzagged right to the edge. I also could have done this first. I could have done the cutting first, and then I could have zigzagged over the edge. If you see what I mean, create a zig like this right over the edge to create a serger effect with a sewing machine for those who don't have a serger like most of us. Um, but I did this instead and this is gonna work just fine. I don't always even seal the seam, it's just I'm doing a video right now. So I'm trying to do things the right way and not be a total jerk. So now this is what we've got. And my next stage is going to be making it three dimensional. So in theory, the next thing I'm going to do is sew. I'm gonna be pushing my corners together and I'm gonna be wanting to sew the corner seams up, right? This is gonna fold in on itself like this. I'm gonna make sure that that's very tidy. I'm gonna do that from behind, and I'm gonna be sure that the lines match up, which it looks like, thank goodness they will. And I wanna be sure that there's nothing extra showing in there too. I'm gonna to try to stitch it up real well with heavyweight thread, just heavyweight, and my needle. Um, I like to use the chenille needles. I've said this in other videos. They just look like this. If you have a regular sewing needle, also fantastic. But for some reason, I just like the way these feel in my hand. I'm used to them. So my next move is going to be to start sewing up these corners like this. And once that is done, just projecting forward, I'm gonna be making decisions about whether there are any little gaps, whether I want to run a fiddly hook behind there to just pull something down or add a stitch. We're gonna to have to see how that goes, but I wonder if I should just get started on this now to show you. Yeah, let's just do that. Let's just get started now. So I'm working in reverse here. I'm gonna be working from underneath. So I'm gonna pinch this in real well. My hands are shaking because I know he wants to go work on that pig. It's stressing me out. So I'm gonna hold this in here like this. I'm gonna come up from behind. Now, can you have somebody else do this for you? Yes. you can. Um, have somebody finish it for you, put the word out in your rug hooking group. You can um, have a lot of it done by an upholsterer uh, if you want to spend the money on it, but I, I never want to spend the money on anything. I rarely have the money, so um, if you know me, you know I like to sew with one strand, but for this, I'm sewing with two. I'm literally going in between, hope you can see this, I'm going right over my fold here that I want to stitch going catching right beyond the last piece of wool on both and pulling it tight and this is the kind of so I don't even know if that was on camera I'm sorry about that I'm just going let me show you with my needle I'm bridging the gap from here on one side to here so I'm digging in right after the last hoop on each side and I'm coming back out and this is the kind of project I pull super tight. That's why I want the really tight thread. And then I tie many, 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 many tight knots. Now that one got stuck on wool, which does happen and will happen. So I'll just force it off, get that loop out. I've got like my number four um, glasses on and I still make mistakes like not being able to see. So I'm just pulling that out and keeping going. I've already got the first stitches in, and I'm just gonna keep doing what I'm doing, sewing the edges together like this, like a little sandwich, right? I know my analogies are always food, huh? And I'm so hungry, trying to diet after this, putting on 10, 10 tons, and not comparing myself to a model by any means, but comparing myself to myself and the clothes that I wore not that long ago, looking to save some money on um, clothing and put that money toward hooking, that means I gotta lose some weight. That means I'm always hungry and thinking about sandwiches and pastry. So I'm just doing what I'm doing. I'm coming down here. 
Don't want to catch that. I'll do another knot, careful knot. Just so I know it's super tight. Now, if you weren't using heavyweight thread, you know, you would have had seven breakages at least by now, and that would be super frustrating, mighty frustrating. So I'm manipulating as I go. It's something you get a feel for and trying to get as close as I can to the sets of loops so that there's, there's a, a little backing showing as possible. If you don't succeed entirely in this, number one, probably doesn't matter. Number two, you can go in with your hook and just pull some pieces through to hide whatever you, Teddy, I'm doing a video in here, baby. He's going to town on his toys back there. Little sweetheart. So I'm coming to the end here. And again, overarching theme to this story is pull it tight. Doing a video, Ted, I'm almost ready, sweet one. I'm going to pull it tight again. I can see everything co literally coming together. Isn't that nice when that happens? And sometimes you have to force it to happen. I used to enjoy reading those six word memoirs and I finally sat down to write one after years and mine was always used to wait for signs. I don't do that anymore. I force things all the time because when you don't, you end up having to be polite or wait. So can't say that's too bad even you know being fairly self-critical it's not perfect perfect but you know I honestly don't even think I'm gonna do anything but trim that corner we're talking about the edge of a footstool and I think it's gonna look really good let me get the foam behind it so we can see it that way this is only a small piece of foam right I still have to go to Joanne's so yeah, that's going to be fine. I mean, for me, for the corner, that's going to be fine. I don't have exactly the same colors there. Sorry. Um, I changed colors, and I did that on purpose. I didn't run out. I just I fool around with changing colors and stuff. The only thing I'm going to do here, because this edge is so tight, the stitches are so tight back there, I'm going to tie it off a couple times on the back, and I'm going to get my scissors and just, these aren't my scissors for this. I'm going to get my rug hooking scissors and just trim some of these little loops. I didn't trim them real well because I wasn't sure about this stage, but now that I can see that this corner is sewn, I can trim it real nice. I'm gonna come back in here. I don't wanna fool with it too much. You know, it's got good structure right now. I'm happy with the way it's standing up. I'm in here just tying a couple more knots because why not? Ho, ho, ho. There, a couple more knots. So as easy as that, Bob's your uncle, that is done. That one corner is done. So I'm gonna move on to the other corners, but you can see how I did that. I'm gonna do the same things with the others. I'm just gonna pinch the excess in behind, just gonna fold it and pinch it behind, line it up, and I'm gonna get my needle there and just start sewing as close to the loops as possible until I have another line that looks exactly like that. And I'm gonna do those two without you so this video isn't extraordinary long like most of my videos have become. And I'll come back to you after I do that with the corners, just like that. Now I'm on my fourth corner, so I'm just thinking to myself, it is worth showing this one more time because this is certainly the tricky part, right? I'm pinching behind, my hand is pinching behind here. But you can also pinch forward like this, just press that middle white part back pull it so it's like a nice tight little sandwich here, right? And this is what I'm looking at. I'm gonna get my needle and I'm coming up under right into the corner. Okay. Oops, you know what? It went right through. I did a double knot. Maybe I should have done a triple knot. Try again. Get it right up in the corner. And I'm going to and make sure you can see and I can see that it's on. Take a hair from under one set of loops and then go to the other side, right under the hoop, the loop, sorry, pull. Also making sure that my rows are lined up. You might not have rows with your design, but this is just the principle of the thing. Going right under that loop to get that first bit of monk's cloth and corresponding piece of monk's cloth on the other side, pull that through pull it through hard, 
come back over here, right underneath, corresponding bit on the other side, pull that through. I know my fat fingers are right in the way, but what can one do, right? Uh, pull it through, and again, I'm gonna do this all the way down. I think I'm gonna stick with you here because this is the last side, and this part is, is the hard part. It's the fiddly part, so I'm just catching one, going across to the other. I'm keeping everything up top. I haven't tied a knot yet. I might tie a knot. I want to tie a knot where it's nice and clean and easy to see. Um, or I can just tie it doubly tight at the bottom. Pulling it really hard. I'm going to just tie a knot here. And you've got to be careful. I'm trying to have it face the camera at the same time. You're not going to have that extra challenge. Let's see. Did I catch any loops? Yeah, of course. Of course I caught a loop. Damn it. I was so hoping I wouldn't catch a loop. You're not going to do that because you're going to be looking at your stitch while you're doing it. Pull that back out. And, yep, liberate that guy. So I just like to do a few knots because I feel like it sturdies it up a bit. And now I'm on the home stretch, right? I'm just going in between this and this. It's nice to go in between the rows too, not immediately in front of the strip, but just right in between the rows. In other words, like, okay, let's see, I got the red coming up, going here, and if you see I'm coming up right in between the green and the red, if you can see that, it's a good place to come up. It's very well hidden that way. Being real careful here. Nothing is, nothing is irreversible with rug hooking, you know that, except maybe dying. This isn't that. Pulling that real tight, and I'm on the home stretch. Oh. So warm, the needle keeps slipping out of my hands because I'm sweaty, sweaty Betty here. So I probably have one more stitch to do in here. Making sure I know what's on from one side to the next. That's the kicker. It's real close together. Coming up again here. And I'm going to do my last stitch right at the bottom of this loop. Come in here now to end it. Oh, look at what I did again. Come on, Mama. Pull that loop out. I'm going to do a double there. I'm going to do at least a double. Same place, same stitch at the bottom, just to tighten that up. And you see how it wants to wrap around your the edges of your strip, so be careful. And then I'm going to put it back down. This is all improv. You don't have to do this. I'm going to put it back down and then tie it underneath. So I've got that in there. And again, just tying off here. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a triple knot just to be sure. And that is my fourth corner. That that is the hard part, right? Just fiddling that. Now again, didn't really do much. I, I don't do perfect anything, but it's still definitely a good enough corner. I'm not gonna trim this stuff until it's actually on the footstool, but I now have all four corners done. So See, there's height all the way around. So now I guess I had better run to Joanne's and get larger piece of foam. And then we are on to the true home stretch. Okay, so we're doing real well now. This is a great guns kind of a day. I even found the picture I did of this thing that I literally uh, blew up. I took a picture of the menu and I blew it up with the, my printer at home and I traced it. And um, could have reversed it if I wanted to, but I did it just the same way. So that's the design. It's very faint. My printer's always about to run out of ink. And this is the name of the person who drew it that I need to do a bit more research on. But um, regardless, this is where we are. I just came back from Joanne's. We got pig stuff and we got foam stuff. We got stuff to do our, our um, pillow part. So I just want to show you real quick. This is the size I needed for this. Um, it's about 12 by 14 so that's the size I needed for that and they actually cut it for me at Joann's with like a craft cutter it's like a, you know it looks like a carving an electric carving knife but they cut it for you if you wanted a certain size they cut it for you because foam is expensive so bring those coupons or whatever just to get it down a bit but if, if you end up having a piece of foam already like I had this junk one you don't need somebody to cut it for you you just get it and you get your kitchen knife and you cut it like this, right? It, I mean, it just, 
it does you can cut it with anything not your teeth don't do it with your teeth just kidding but um, I mean you can do it with a kitchen knife so don't worry about who's got the knife and who's got the electric knife and how well that's gonna work just you can cut it yourself if you have a spare piece that you just need to trim down so what I'm gonna do now is stuff this in here and just get a feel for it because I'm hungry for lunch Oh man that looks good it's super modest now it looks so good I'm gonna stop so I also have these are my bits of the monk's cloth coming off um, I also have you know what I feel like I wish it was just a tiny bit deeper so it popped a bit more so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get some of my quilt batting I just always have quilt batting or stuffing or whatever let's get a little bit of this and let's just make it a little bit um, tighter so I'm just gonna wrap this around wrap it around this way first let's see yeah let's do this let's do this I could wrap it around twice too see if I don't have to cut it I'm saving myself some aggravation too sorry about the crazy great storm of crazy fluff so yeah let me see if I just did it like this and cut some of it here I just wrapped it like this a little bit I can wrap it the other way too I wrapped it like this a little bit. It might give me a bit more fullness. Let's try it. Let's start here. I'm just, as you can see, this is Deanna's style of foolishness. I'm not measuring or doing anything grown up. I'm just cutting. It's just, it's just quilt batting. This stuff is always at craft places too and um, thrift stores. So yeah, I feel like I just wish it was a bit tighter and fluffier. And that's a preference thing. So I want it to really pop. So let's see. Now if that's like that, let's try again. Oh, there go the glasses. And of course I can get regular, I can use my batting and trim it up or I can get regular stuffing like poly stuffing and stick some more in there to make sure it's nice and full. What I'm thinking about is when I attach it in a minute, I want to pull this so this is right at the edge. So I wanted it to be higher, and it is higher. I think that's going to do me. I really do. I think when I pull it tight that that is going to do me. That did its job. The only question is, do I want a little more on these sides? Hmm, I think I do. So I'm just going to take a little bit more. Just cut off a little bit more. And let's see how we can finagle this now. Don't cut your finger off, Mama. Let's see, is that one piece? Yeah, that's a foldy. Let's do like something like this. And fold it, hairs and all. It's not quite wide enough, is it? Just do it like this. Stuff it in there. Just stuffing it around the corners. This is a real organic stuff. I don't know that I want a lot more in the back though, so I think I might trim this part here. I don't want a lot more there. Let's see. I want to be sure the edges are stuffed. I want to be sure uh, the corner points in the front are stuffed well. So let me do a little more around the sides. I like this business. This is working. Stuff more like this. You can actually fold it in half. That works well in terms of size. And I'll wrap around the corners a little bit so everything's nice and tight. I don't want it so tight it's going to rip open, you know, but it's, we're not there. It's looking, it's looking pretty, pretty right. And I'm going to do that again over here. I'm just going to take a little bit more and wing it. Little wild strips. Oh, Joanne's is already getting all their seasonal stuff out. I mean, had stomach cramps when I walked in there. All right, so now let me fold this a little bit like this. Get some in the corners again. Yeah. Yeah, that, that looks good to me. That looks right. You can always go back and add more. So now here I come with this, the base. Oh, and the other thing I wanted to tell you, besides the butter knife thing that they cut, cut things for you, um, if you want foam cut, besides that, I made another discovery just now. They have their own brand of staples, 
and there's only two questions that they, they ask you. Do you want light duty or heavy duty? So I didn't know what either of those things were, but I said, I don't know, you know, I've got a, I've got a Stanley um, staple gun. It's a regular, you know, I don't, I don't build houses with it, so I'm assuming it's light duty. And they said, so I got the light duty staples, and, um, and they said, you know, if they're wrong, you can always bring them back if you, if you don't use them all or, or rip the box open. It's pretty hard to open the box without ripping it open, so be careful about that if you're not sure. But apparently, like, all of these types of smaller staple guns are light duty, you know. Um, so if, if you need them, they're there. And, yeah, easier than going to Home Depot or something. So now I'm going to bring this over here. It's staple gun time. And the idea is, I'm going to flip her over. The idea is oh, -da, that I want to, this might be too tight actually. Yeah, I think that's going to be too thick. Look at, see this is what can happen when you are a Nimnitz like me. Yeah, that's way too thick. Yeah, I'm going to have to get rid of all that. So, do like I say, not what I, not what I do. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, yeah, this, this stuffing is too much. So let's get the stuffing off. But it was worth doing regardless because you can see that if you wanted to add a little fluff to yours, if you weren't having the same issue with height, then that would have been the right way to do it, just cutting some batting or cutting some stuffing. But I think I'm going to be good just like this. I might add a little bit to the corners. Let's see how it goes. Because I'm going to have to, yeah, I'm going to see the difference there. I'm going to really have to stretch it. But you want to, you know, you want to. here and I'm going to want to, I'm hoping that I can pull it high enough all the way around. I have my screwdriver right here if I need to fool with that again, but I'm going to want it pulled up all the way around. And it's going to be tight. It's going to be tight. I'm going to staple as I go. Let's see. You know, it might be that the three inches is just too tall plus the base, but let's see how far I get. Because if this doesn't quite stretch, I still have recourse. And that recourse, it's not a very happy thought, but is to hook another row if I can't quite get it around the edge. Let's see. If I were to get this around the edge here by pulling, it would pull right there. Could I do it in other places? Let's see. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pull it up. I mean, I want it tight, but I don't want it to rip. I'm going to pull it up and just secure it here for starters, just for starters. I would want to rework that, but let me come to the opposite corner and see if there's a chance of getting it all the way up and around. That foam wants to go, it's just the wooden part obviously that doesn't, so yeah, it looks like it might work. Murphy's taking his nap, he's taking his daily nap, and that's when I do my work. It's fiddly. It's definitely fiddly. Let me put another staple here. And, and again, I'm going to be reworking all of this all the way around. And let's put one. I can pull these out later with my um, screwdriver. So let's see. You know what? That might be too tight. And yeah, it's going to relax, but look at how tight I have to pull it in. So, you know what that means. If I'm going to put this cushion on here, I thought it would all come out in the wash kind of thing, but it's going to be tight. I'm going to lose a lot of the edge. And then the question becomes, do I want to hook another couple rows so I have a bit more space? Am I okay with losing the edge? I don't know. It's a hard call. Um, it's a hard call because it also looks good like this, kind of round it off. Let me just push a little bit further. Why not, right? Come this far without having to do extra hooking. You know what? I mean, I know like laziness prevails usually with me, but I don't know, I kind of like it with being a bit rounded off. I'm just concerned that this edge seems dented. Let me get the fourth edge on, and then I'm really gonna have a better idea of what I need to do next. I'm pulling this 
way down. And yet, this is the reason a lot of people bring this to a upholster because it takes a lot of strength in your hands to pull it, to get it down to meet the wood. It takes a lot of strength that I don't particularly have. Let's see. Hmm, interesting. I'm just deciding as I go. But you know what, at the end of the day, I think I'm gonna have to hook a little bit extra. Can you believe it? Because even with this down, pulled way down, way down, you see how thick it is that she is right on the edge. And I don't know, I don't know that I like that. I feel like I want her to be, but you know the other option I have is to cut my foam thinner. I'm gonna go with that option first. I'm gonna cut the foam thinner and see where that brings me. So this is a to be continued. We're getting there, we're getting there. But these are the challenges that you can face. Um, I could hook a little bit of extra, give it another, well, to the, to the squiggle, another sort of three quarters of an inch, um, just so I feel like the design of her is preserved and isn't rolling off the edge like this. So I'm gonna weigh my options. I'm gonna come right back to you with a decision. It's a big decision. I think we got the problem solved here. So the old Diana would have had to destroy something expensive to make up for that kind of upset, but the new Diana is okay with going into the yard, cutting this in half with a kitchen knife. Just as I said you can, I did. And you know what? It doesn't even matter because, yeah, that doesn't look as good as what they did at Joanne's, but my thing is a lot thinner, and now I have a second piece to play with another time. So let's give this another shot. This can happen, you know. I'm not counting for going around the wood and needing that much extra space. I thought I could pull it off, and I couldn't. But you know what? I can this time. It's going to be beautiful. So now we're back to that point of wondering, do I need to add anything to it? So we're, we're back to the reverse problem. Do I need to add anything to it? Um, you know, I'm going to be pulling it down here. I might add a little bit in the corners. The corners feel a little bit skimpy. So back to the batting that I discarded the first time. Man, that would have never fit. That would have been like sticking a watermelon up your nostril or something. Never going to happen. But now that it's a little bit thinner, I'm going to pad the corners a little bit. So I'm just going to put this in here. Maybe even fold it four times. Yeah. Corners just need a little bit of extra oomph. I don't want to give him too much extra oomph. I think I gave it too much extra oomph. I'm going to take half of that out. All trial and error. But, you know, in the end you're going to get there. This is not, it's only noon here. It's not like I've been doing this for hours and hours. It's a lot of trial and error. I'm going to wrap it around a little bit. Yeah, let's see how that goes. And a little bit here. and a little bit on the other sides, and then let's make a decision about whether I wanna do more. Because again, we're gonna be pulling it tight still, so I wanna be sure that it's bouncy and pretty. Put a little bit on this corner. Just putting it right on top of the corners. And laying it flat with my hand, just can feel it in there. It's not flat. And final piece dropped on the floor. Let's see. This corner's missing, you can just tell. This little piece on this corner, nice and flat. Now let's see what we've got. All right, I'm gonna put some more sample guys in there. Now you're gonna see how much easier it is for me to come over here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tuck under. I can cut all these little strings off later. I'm gonna tuck under and bring that right to the edge there. I'm folding this part under, right? I'm folding my hemp, oh God, sometimes this really gets my wrist. There we go. And I'm gonna fold along, bring it to the same height. I'll put more in it, I'm just getting the gauge for this in my head. I'm gonna turn it a little because that's a bad angle for my, for my wrist. 
you can see, so far I've got it right to the edge here, which is what I want. Corners are going to be a little trickier. Um, I'm going to want to trim some of this down in the corners. So I'm going to do that next. I was just making sure that this was the one. It's hard to know when it's the one, right? And let me come over to this side. You always go to the opposite side to be sure uh, you know what you're getting. Make sure that this is not too tight still. Nope, that's fine. That's great. And I'm hiding my unfinished edge. And yeah, I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna put dust cloth, cloth or anything on this. I'm not I'm not selling this in a gallery or something. This is part of it underneath that no one's ever gonna see. So I'm gonna do like the four people before me who worked on this particular stool and um, you know, you, you can you can staple on like a thin layer of black, which is like a dust cloth. Um, you certainly can, but since I have to give this away tomorrow, that was one of the determining factors with me was should I hook some more rows? Well, I have to I have to give it away tomorrow. I'm seeing my sister tomorrow, and Teddy has a dentist appointment. Jocelyn's going horseback riding, so I don't really want to put anything more on myself in terms of projects besides the ten things I need to do before tomorrow. So that was one of my determining factors in just cutting down the foam a little bit with a kitchen knife. It was a good solution, though worked. I'm just making sure that this is going to work. Let's see. Get this back up here. Yeah. I think that's going to be nice. I haven't pulled at it yet. You know, I haven't pulled at the corners. I haven't gotten all the edges in yet. I'm going to do that next. But in terms of the way it's looking on the sides, right, I haven't done the corner yet, but you can see just from the few staples I've got in, it's looking nice. It's gonna be, that's gonna be the side of it. You're not gonna see any white. So I'm gonna start the corners and I'm gonna be right back to you. So I wanna show you what I'm doing with the corners here. I'm folding them down, first one and then the other. I've got one down and then the other over it. Making sure that the loops are still on the edges. I feel like there's a tiny gap right there. I might have to hook that tiny, tiny, there's a little white gap right there. I don't know if you can see it. it might drive me nuts. But I'm doing folding over, so I'm hiding the ugly bits. This part's fiddly. Folding over and putting them together like this. It's gonna be fiddly. This is why people like to put the dust cloth things on. But, you know, it's the corners there, you're not gonna see it from the front. I'll show you that later. You're definitely not gonna see it from the front. So I'm just right now going around, doing corners, pulling the corners up and doing the corners. The thing is you've got this giant corner piece that you need to trim when you start. So it's a good thing to maybe trim this down first diagonally because that's creating a lot of bulk. Get that flat and then start rolling your other pieces in like this, right? So that's one side. Again, using my fingers uh, for a lot of pressure. Make sure you're, you're having a day that you feel like doing this kind of work not insanely hard but there is a little bit of pulling with fingertips so and then this one I want to I'll probably trim that one down too actually because that is really too much let's see how that's going to work I'm going to want to fold this under here and then I'm going to have a big extra bit so what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim some more I'm going to trim down here I just don't want a lot of bulk even underneath there's no reason it's all sealed up to the corners I'm gonna want this to fold down to hide the edges. And if the edges are giving you a hard time, cut some more edge off, right? We don't need this. Don't cut into your zigzag. That's what's really ultimately protecting it. But get, up, get rid of all the little bits that are creating mayhem. And then I'm back up here. Just coming up at the right angle, folding. Yeah, there we go. That's gonna work. So. And all this along here in the back. Hope you can see that. Coming back over here. I'm going to want to pull that up there. I'm going to want to secure this a little bit more. It's not too bad. It really isn't. It's not too bad. Now, what have we got going here? I'm going to want to fold this under. This one on there a bit weird so what I'm going to do is just do it this way the only things you need to worry about are hiding the extra right getting rid of it so it's not super bulky just make sure it's all nailed down and there's no loose pieces flying around and once you have accomplished that you've done enough it's the bottom of a footstool right
right? It's the, it's the bottom of the footstool. So just make sure it's good enough for you or the person you're giving it to. Get all your little edges tucked under. You can pull up your, um, I'm to do that a bit more. You can pull up your staples and stuff if you feel like this one, I think I might pull up a little bit more. You can pull them up with your screwdriver um, if you feel like it's not quite tight enough. This is a work in progress. Until you do the last staple, it's a work in progress. So you're just pulling, stapling, pulling up staples until you feel like you got it right. Feel like I'm getting it right. Yeah, I feel like we're getting there. I'm gonna move this staple. You know what? No, I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna change that one. I'm just gonna put another one next to it. And I'm just gonna continue doing this all the way around. I've done so far this. And I'm just gonna do this last corner and then we'll flip it over and look look at how it actually looks. So I am on the almost final phase of this. I'm just gonna screw in the legs. And one of the things I should have said, as I was stapling the backing on, folding it under and finagling it and all that, was make sure, reminder, you do not cover your holes for these legs, right? You don't wanna do that. You'd have to go plowing right through them. Believe me, metal wins over cloth, but still, don't do that um, on purpose anyway. So I'm getting my four legs on, and then let's turn it over and see how we look. Yeah, that one doesn't want to go in there. I wonder if that one had a specific, didn't want to thread. I hope this one threads on the last one. Wouldn't it be funny if it was like each one only fit one corner? I think that's a bit too masterful for what this stool is. Okay, and number four. And let's see, let's see what we got. That looks, that looks fine. Um, I love it. I super love it. Yeah. It's, looks like this underneath, just folded and stapled. Um, it's not as thick as I thought it would be, but that was a problem. I wasn't accounting in my head for the foam and that thick and flexible piece of wood. But in the end, we cut a piece of the foam off and it's in there. We know how ugly it looks in there, but you know what? Jessica doesn't and she doesn't watch my video, so she's not gonna find out. So that is okay. It's stuff like this that you can see. Now the last touch that I'm gonna do, probably is gonna be while I watch reruns of the Gilmore Girls tonight. I'm probably just, because I used a lot of plaid in this piece. Um, you know, plaids are notorious for fraying and stuff in the borders. I used a lot of plaids. And I see some little strings and stuff hanging off. It's not the end of the world. But I'm probably gonna sit for an hour in the evening uh, before I get this in a box and wrapped up and just cut the little edges that I see little hair sticking up. Um, I'll probably just cut all those. See this little one here, that kind of thing. I'm gonna get my rug hooking scissors out and trim those down so there's nothing hanging. Now over time it will become worn and that's fine, but it has this nice border that I liked. Oop, there's some fluff. That cushion is still a bit, uh, that corner is still a bit wonky, but I bet it's gonna settle down. The overall look is pretty good. It looks pretty nice. It's pretty squared and nice. I'm going to tighten up these legs a little bit, but I'm happy with this. I think this looks real good. It's a beautiful memory from our childhood, and I think she's going to love putting, her, that sounds awful, putting her feet on here, but I think she's going to love it. It has a pretty colorful edge on it, and yeah, I think it's going to be nice. So um, yeah, I, I'm going to do other videos and post some stuff that show you if you want to take a design and do this with it, you're just squaring off the top, bottom, and sides, north, south, east, and west, boxing them out however thick you think you want it, and you saw from this video that's a work in progress. Uh, but you're basically putting your design in the center and creating a border. Now a lot of borders, the design is part of the edge that wraps, but for me I just did stripes, and it doesn't get any easier than that, just stripes. So this was making a footstool. I hope this helped. If you're thinking about making a footstool, there's footstool kits, but when you want to make a footstool from an existing footstool, it's really not hard. It's something you can do. I know you can do it. Um, just figure out your steps, watch the video, write down what the steps are, write what you need so you don't go to the craft store 25 times. Um, and it'll come out great, probably better than mine did. It'll come out great. So bye for now from Ribbon, Ribbon Candy Hooking. Yes. If you do have edges, like I did, remember I said it might be that my edge, there was a little gap in the edge that that was gonna drive me crazy. Um, it is driving me crazy. So I ended up 
putting in a little bit of the blue where it was a little bare. There was a tiny bit of white showing and I couldn't deal with it. So I'm actually just pulling it up like I would hook anything. Pulling loops up in there and then I'm going to take my scissors at the end and cut off the extra. But I just want to show you that it is possible if you have little gaps, once you've put everything together and everything, the, the cards have fallen as they will, you can still do a bit of hooking this way and bring hoops up this way to hide some areas. That is also possible. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be the end just because you've already stapled it on here. It's still possible to do some little touch-ups this way. That is truly the end.